when we moved into this house in October, it was just me and Mike. And it, the house had sat empty for two years, so it was full of rat shit and <laughs> dust. It was a terrible thing. We all do our own things, you know, like kind of everyone contributes to the house and the organization as a whole. Go slow, basically right after this barn, uh -huh. this driveway to the right. Yeah, and it's peaceful here too. That's why, that's why I like it. I'm Nathan Lewis, and I've uh, been uh, one, of the, one of the founding members of Veterans Sanctuary. The, the Veterans Sanctuary is, is a group we just started off. We're a nonprofit, and we're, we're focusing on um, healing veterans, and we're trying to do that um, as a, like a, a, a community a group. We're going to try to live together, work together, um, we farm. <laughs> oh, he's out. How'd you get out? This one always gets out. And I think we just like to dig. We like, you know, it's between, you know, just just digging raised beds and maybe it's from the military, maybe it's from the army. I joined the army after I graduated from high school and I, I, I was in basic training um, September 11th, 2001. So it was like, it was like my first week and um, Went to Iraq in 2003, March. My experience there, that, that really kind of shaped my opinion against the war. And I, I, I could see how, how we were becoming kind of a harmful occupying force. I mean, I hated everybody, you know. It's, I, I found a crew of a couple good friends that I really respected and trusted. And, and other than that, I, for a long time, you know, basically the, why I'm here still, why I'm at the sanctuary is because I can't, I, I mean, I, when I work, I get so angry with people and people spending money and just looking around me, you know, college kids and just like how things go on, on campuses and around, around the country. It's just been so disgusting and disturbing to see uh, everyone spending money and talking on their cell phones and chatting on Facebook. And it, it's been, uh, really hard to keep my cool, cool during everything. I joined the Army when I was 20 years old because, like so many others, I couldn't afford college. I was going to join with my best friend, Nick, uh, and we were trying to decide what service to go into. And the army recruiter just happened to call that same day and said there was free donuts. And I was about 240 pounds at the time. Um, and free donuts was a pretty, pretty good uh, uh, enticement to get in the door. A lot of it was the money side. I mean, 250,000 plus dollars uh, in education plus book money stipend, housing, I don't have to pay for any of this kind of thing, is covered. So that was nice because there's no way in hell I would get a education like this through um, paying it by my own means. Right now, uh, I kind of consider ROTC like playing army. You go into the real army that's a 24 hours, seven days a week, 365 days a year, obligation and commitment. It's a lifelong choice that could have devastating repercussions. This is your AFN Afghanistan Freedom Watch update. I'm senior airman Jared Watson. Soldiers. My thoughts and opinions about our involvement in the Middle East. I guess as, a, as an active duty military member, my thoughts and opinions I think are as, uh, as difficult to express as I guess anyone's. I hated the war from the get-go. I wasn't a big supporter of, of it before I went in especially a war that's based on lies and stealing and um, has been just so hugely wrong for and, and bad for all of these poor, innocent people. Sometimes people uh, just don't care. Sometimes they're just very ignorant of the situation. People were making the connection between the attack on September 11th and Saddam. I think originally it was not like, just after 9-11. Uh, because of 9-11. I don't know the exact reason why recently we invaded, but... Um, well, 
I'm still thinking it's oil. I think it has something to do with 9-11. Um, I think they did it because of the terrorist attacks. The weapons of mass destruction. The oil. I'm, I, if you're like, quite honest, I'm kind of ignorant about what's going on right now. I really got my dog on a whim. One of the first dogs I saw, I was like, that one, that's my dog, that's gonna be my dog. He just looked up at me and I was like, we made this like connection. He, he essentially means the world to me. He is, my, he is my baby, I take care of him, I bathe him every week, we go on runs or walks three times a day, like, he is everything. You're okay, you're just gonna be wet. Yeah, I guess having a dog made me a little more I guess paternal is the word. There's people outside, whatever, they're probably drunk, having a good time, good for them. But for me, it's like, that is, that's what I have to protect. Like that part is tough for me. And I wish that they, just people were more cognizant of the, that fact that they're granted all these freedoms, all these rights, and they're not, they don't come free, they don't come cheap, they don't come easy. There's a lot of vets now, and there's a lot of people uh, coming back kind of lost and seriously damaged and not, um, you know, not getting the help they need. If somebody said they didn't have any fears, they're, then they're lying to you. My unit and the rest of the people that were down in Gitmo, we just said these people are fucking terrorists and we, we treated them as such. We beat the shit out of them. We sprayed them with oat mace basically every, every day. We did that without ever asking ourselves why those people were there. I'm worried about coming home and being a completely different person. I'm worried about coming home and missing half my body. There's so much that goes through your head and I'd be the last person to say I'm scared of anything or I'm worried about anything, but hell yeah, I'm scared about going overseas. The day I decided that I never wanted to go back to Afghanistan um, was the day that I saw death up close for the, for the first time. We air assaulted in, or helicoptered in, to a village called Barj Matal, which is in uh, Nuristan province, Afghanistan. They surrounded us on three sides and opened fire when we were on the rooftops. And many of us were either injured, not myself, luckily, um, or and several were killed. Um, this guy, Eric Livingston, uh, he got shot this, um, and shot dead. and. Um, Probably the worst experience I've ever had to deal with was having to carry his body um, to the helicopter with a sniper fighter just raining down on us and just having his blood just covering my uniform, um, sleeping from his body bag. And I actually had the blood on my body armor for the rest of the deployment and I refused to scrub it off until I left. That was the worst day of my life. This culture of of it's just a job. I'm doing what I told. It's not my position to question the war. You know, I'm just a lowly old citizen. I joined up. I signed my name on the line, so so you know, I I can't question. I can't speak out. You know, and you know that's just nonsense. I, I've I've never had the wool pulled over my eyes on anything uh, in the military. I think that if you educate yourself and work to be a, a good military member, then that shouldn't happen to anyone. If you act as a blind sheep, that's, that's kind of your own fault, whether you're a civilian or a military member, I guess, you know? Because I'm in the army, I have to, I have to sacrifice. I have to give up these things that everybody else takes for granted. I have to be 4,000 miles away from my home, away from everything I know. You can't understand that, I guess, that sacrifice. And it's tough to say at this point whether or not this is, it's all going to be worth it, and we're all, it'll, whether or not it'll all pan out. I'm hoping it does, but I, I can't really say whether or not it's worth it quite yet. Right here is for the people.